Welcome back to Tux Traveler. Well, today we're going to talk a little bit about the power system. I've covered my power system in the past, but I've spent a lot of time talking about the computers and how I have the computers attached. We're not going to do that today. Instead, what I'm going to do is just kind of talk about the overview of the system for the typical van lifer. Let's not talk about what's plugged in. Let's just talk about getting power to the places where power needs to go. So I'm up here on the roof because it's as good a spot as any. Well, what we have over here is I have on my roof 500 watts of solar. Now that's this is two 200 watt panels and a single 100 watt panel. Some people will say, well, that 100 watt panel is throwing, uh, slowing things down. That's not entirely true. Panels can slow each other down, but it all depends not on specific wattage, not on specific amps. It depends on the amperage watt ratio. I actually did a little bit of experimentation. There's really no significant difference between running or not running the extra 100 watt panel other than it draws a little bit less power. Now, I would love to do a full-fledged scientific test of that, and I need to find a place that's not Pennsylvania where we have clouds. I need to do that when I get out in the desert where I have a couple days where I have very consistent sun, and there's a few different things to test, a few different things to look for, a few different things that need logged when I'm doing such an experiment. I can't do that from right here. But suffice it to say, I've been running now for over a year with this setup, and this is working out just fine. So what do we have here? Of course, I have three panels. Now, the important thing is that the panels run the same ratios. So they are all pushing out approximately 20 volts. Each panel is both about 20 volts. The 100 watt panel pushes out about six amps, the 200 watt panels push out about 12 amps. That means the ratios are exactly the same. When you do the divisions and calculations, the ratios are fine. That's why I know these panels will not slow each other down. Again, we'll do some more scientific experimentation with that. The panels are series together, which means we will get a maximum of approximately 60 or so volts and we will get a maximum of approximately, what is it, 12 plus 12 plus 6. That would be a 24, 28 amp draw. I've actually seen up to 30 amp draw and up to 65 watts or 65 volts come through the panels. So I know we are doing fine. All right, now these guys are put together in series and then they run into the van in these boxes. Now I did try and get a, one of the single, uh, the single things where both wires feed in. It is impossible to get them up on the van. So get the two singles and then put one of them on uh, the, the high runners with the power coming in and then just make sure that they're nice and sealed. And I don't know what that leaf is doing here. Let's go ahead and get rid of the leaf. So with that, our next step, we're gonna go in and talk about where these wires go once they come into the van. And uh, we'll go ahead and look at the system from there. So here is where I have my wires coming in. Here's my negative, there's my positive, and the other wire coming through is actually my cellular antenna, which allows me to draw better solar power. So these guys draw in and they run down the back side of the cabinet, and I have them attached to the back of the wall down there where they are going to come in and merge up with our charge controller. So our charge controller has a few different lines on it. This guy here is actually the remote readout, which sits up on my panel. I'll show you that in a few moments. On the far other side back here is a temperature panel, which is down next to the batteries. And then the red and the black on the left side is coming in from the charge, uh, from the solar panel. And the two going out are leaving the charge controller down into the batteries. Now this is a 40 amp charge controller, which has a maximum solar panel in footage of 550 watts, which means I'm right at the maximum of it. If I wanted to add an extra 100 watts and do maybe three identical 200 watt panels, I would actually have to in, uh, upgrade the charge controller to a 60 amp, which comes with an extra $300 charge between the 40 and the 60 uh, amp charge controller. So if you can do it with the 40, try with the 40 first. Now, when the battery power uh, leaves these guys, it goes down into the battery. 
So that goes down through some holes that I've drilled and down over this way and they fuse on into the battery. Now the battery is actually run over with these big battery plugs here and here. So those are technically what I use as my battery. And so you can see that uh, the charge controller goes down, those go into the battery system, and then the battery is what stores the charge. Now, as I've said on this channel a few different times, I've actually created my own battery. This is my battery. It's made up of four individual cells. Each one of these cells is 3.2 volts, 100 amp hour. And so I have them in blocks of two. There's four blocks of two. These blocks of two are paralleled together, which is going to, to uh, double the amperage, I believe. And then each of the four blocks are series together to add the voltage up to be a 12 volt battery. Technically like 14.8 or 14.4, whatever that happens to be. Uh, 3.2 times four. So these are the little battery leads that go in. There's one on each of the four cube blocks. Those feed back into the BMS. This is the battery management system here. This is a 200 amp battery system management system, allowing me to have up to a 2000 watt inverter or 2000 watt output at a given time. So this guy here runs in from our negative terminal here, our positive terminal here. The positive terminal goes up through a power block, allowing me to cut all power to the battery. That goes up to our positive battery terminal. Our negative goes into the BMS, and then the BMS is what feeds it into the negative battery terminal. You'll note that the negative battery terminal there is grounded to the side of the van using that plug that's right in the middle of the frame there uh, on the uh, black side. And we grounded that by grounding off a little bit of paint off the side of the chassis of the van, putting a hole down through there, the plywood back there and simply plugging a ground nut onto it. Now the next thing we'll talk about is our inverter. We're using a 1500 watt pure sine wave inverter. If you're using anything that's not like AC adapters, you need a pure sine wave inverter. It won't work with basic household equipment. I can do up to a 2000 watt inverter with this setup, but the way I wired my van, pretty much everything in my van all uses DC power and so the 1500 watt is perfectly fine in my particular setup and situation So you'll see on the back. There's a few lines coming out. One of those is the Ethernet cable. That is actually the Adapter for the manual control which is on a separate panel on my instrument panel So here is the instrument panel hit this button, it's gonna turn on. I'm actually running the computer right now, so I'm not going to do that. You can see we're at full battery, and this is the readout for the charge controller that I had mentioned earlier. I have a series of other buttons and switches. These are all tied into the DC fuse box. We'll talk about those later. And this is the only thing I run off of regular AC power on a regular basis. It is a full-fledged gaming computer uh, mounted into here with a combination of amazing technology and uh, redneck kung fu. Back down here, we have three outlets coming off the back. One of these goes up to a standard power strip, which sits right on my desk. The other one, uh, the other two rather, are gonna go out to two separate AC outlets. So looking at my outlets, here is one of them, which is what the computer plugs into. And then we have on the other side of the desk, an outlet on the other side. And we have on the other side of the van, we have another outlet, which right now is also charging my camera batteries. So that outlet there is what works fine. Now the next thing that we have in here is we have a converter. That is this box here. The converter converts AC power into DC power. This particular one outputs 35 amps. It actually technically outputs 30 amps on calculation. It allows me to plug this guy into any AC wall outlet at 110 volts. It draws 750 watts for those that are measuring such things, and it feeds 30 solid amps back into the battery the other way. So that there is the converter. Next, we will talk about the DC-DC charger. This is otherwise alternately called an engine charger. I have a separate video on the full installation on this covering insane detail. So if you want to see how this works and how I have it installed, I do that. What this allows me to do is to turn on the charger from the 
uh, engine w up when the engine is running and this is going to feed a cool 20 amps back into my battery. So it's going to do a really, really good job of uh, giving me enough power in the event that I cannot get enough sun. And for just for uh, completion of the video, up here is the power switch. This is the back side of that power switch. I toggle that guy on and it's going to feed power back into the batteries. Our last component is the DC fuse box. This allows us to pow run power distribution to the rest of the van. Several of these wires are connected to standard USB charging ports. Some of them are your standard like uh, 12 volt car ports. Some of them are just directly wired into a variety of devices through various different fuses. That's how that's going to work and frankly it works very well. This is actually how I have a lot of the, the, the power running so smoothly is because I've used DC power on everything I could, including the monitors, several of the computers. It's actually not all that difficult to make sure that you have computers and whatnot running on DC power. And I have separate videos on the channel talking about how to do that. So hopefully that little primer video gave you an idea of things to look at when you are looking to install your own power box into your van. Do you need lithium? Do you need uh, AGM batteries? Do you need solar? How much solar? These are good questions you want to ask. It's going to start by asking how much electricity are you going to need and use in your van? How much can you cut it back? And if you can figure out how to do things like put your monitors on DC power instead of using the AC power blocks, you're going to use a lot less power. If you can figure out, for example, how to charge your laptops on your DC power rather than using AC and adapters, that's also worth doing. I have videos about all of those things on this particular channel that don't necessarily fit the scope of this video here. So I'll go ahead and link those below and uh, on cards on the video here. Mostly I think I'll link them as cards rather than putting them below. So if you don't know how to use that card feature on YouTube, up here in one of the corners, you're gonna see a little dot there. Pull that down, there's a list of other videos that are relevant to this one that I've put into the, the channel here. Go ahead and click on those. You can see those other videos. And a lot of us YouTubers do that. And I realize a lot of people don't know how those things work. But anyway, that's how that works. Well, thanks for watching, everybody. Subscribe to the channel if you've not already done so. Hit that notification bell. Pass this video far and wide on any social media platforms that you have. And we will see you a little bit further down the road.